Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I've got a mini ITX build for you in the Fractal Era 2. If you see any parts you like you'll find links to all the parts in the description so let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. So this is the Fractal Era 2. We've got aluminium panels around the case and we've got perforated areas on both sides with a wooden panel on the top. So this wooden panel on the top looks really good. If you want to remove it you can simply press in at the back here. That's going to flip the front of the panel up you can get your hand in and then lift it up and away. And if you take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice the wooden panel is reinforced, but there's no dust filters. Taking a look at our cases front I.O., we've got a power button, a combined headphone and microphone jack, a single USB Type-C port and two USB Type-A ports. So the aluminium panels going around the case are actually one piece. And if we take a look around the back of the case, you'll notice we've got a lock symbol on the back of our dust filter. And it's actually our dust filter which holds these panels in place. So we're going to need to remove the dust filter, we can simply pull it out from the back. And then when the dust filter is removed, we can simply lift the aluminium panels off. So orientating you in the case, this is our GPU side. You can see we've got our riser cable here, so our graphics card is going to be mounted here vertically. So this is our motherboard side of the case. The case is compatible with many ITX motherboards. It is going to be mounted here, upside down, with our PCIe slot here, and the riser cable is going to plug into it here. Our power supply is going to be mounted beside, and then at the top of the case we've got space for fans or radiators. So in terms of fan and radiator support at the top of the case, it's up to two 120 or 240 millimeter fans, or up to a 240 or 280 millimeter radiator. You probably will have a much easier time if you go with a 240 millimeter radiator. In terms of length for your radiator, this is limited to 300 millimeters, and in terms of width, it's up to 140 millimeters. You're also going to have to be careful with your fan and radiator thickness at the top. You've got a total thickness of up to 68 millimeters, but it is important to note this connector for your power supply is only 52 millimeters from the top. So removing the fan stroke radiator bracket at the top is going to be completely toolless. There is one notch here at the front, which you're going to pull to the side, and there's another one at the back we need to pull to the side at the same time. And then you're going to simply be able to lift the top fan stroke radiator bracket off. And if you can't remember which way around this bracket goes, there's a little arrow on it which points towards the front. And in terms of graphics card support, you're going to be able to get graphics cards up to a maximum length of 326mm and up to a maximum height of 137mm. You'll notice we've got this large cutout at the front of the case and this is to help you mount large graphics cards. So if you do have a larger graphics card, you're going to be able to bring it inside the case and pass it through this cutout. And then you're going to be able to slide the graphics card into the case and mount it in the slot. The one area you're going to have to be careful with your graphics card is the width. In this case will accommodate graphics cards between 2.4 and 3.1 slots depending on the position you put the case's middle spine. So we'll take a look out of the box. You'll notice that the case is set up with the middle spine in position 3. It can also be installed in position 2 or position 1. In position 3 this is going to maximize the space for your graphics card. So in this position you're able to fit the widest graphics cards up to a maximum thickness of 63mm. But the downside of this is compatibility for your CPU cooler which is at its lowest height of only 55mm. So if you want to make more space for your CPU cooler you can adjust the position of the middle spine. There's two screws at the front and at the back which you're going to need to loosen. So with the four screws loosened I can then push our middle spine all the way to the other side and you'll notice now I've significantly improved the space for our CPU cooler. So you can now fit a CPU cooler up to a maximum height of 70 millimeters but the downside of this is we have significantly limited space on the GPU side so we're now only able to fit a graphics card up to a maximum width of 48 millimeters or up to a 2.4 slot card. So there also is a middle slot so we can pull the middle spine over into the second position and to secure it in place all you need to do is tighten up the screws and there is little notches to help hold it between the sizes. So you're going to be able to fit a graphics card up to a maximum thickness of 56mm or up to a 2.8 slot card while still giving you up to 63mm in terms of height for your CPU cooler. So because I'm using a really thick graphics card I've gone ahead and secured the spine in position number 3. You can see we've got the cable extension for our power supply. If you were having any difficulty getting your graphics card installed beneath it, you can see we've got two screws holding it in place at the back of the case, so you could temporarily remove it, install your graphics card, and then replace the cable. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove our case accessory box, and on the back of the box you get a little diagram explaining what each of the screws is for. And in the box you get three bags of screws and four cable ties. So your power supply is going to be installed in this removable bracket here and the case is compatible with both SFX and SFXL power supplies up to a maximum length of 130mm. So there's one screw we need to remove to free up our power supply bracket. 
and the bracket is installed on a reel and we can simply slide it out. And if we take a look down the bottom of the case, you've noticed we've got this cable extension for our power supply. So it's going to go into the bottom of the power supply and the other end of the cable runs to the back of the case. If we take a look at the bottom of the case, you'll see the Fractal have installed two 120mm PWM fans. The cables are managed at the GPU side with these Velcro cable straps. And we are going to be able to daisy chain the cables together. So imagine most people will have no interest in removing these fans. Fractal have done a great job of installing them and managing them for you. But if you did want to remove them, there's four screws in the bottom of the case that you're going to need to remove, which is then going to allow you to pull this bottom panel off and it can just be pulled forwards. And you see that's going to give you access to the screws to remove the bottom fans. So in terms of mounting drives, it is possible to mount four or two and a half inch drives in this case. So we've got two here behind our power supply. You're simply going to set the drives into place and secure each of them using four screws from the case accessory box. So this drive mounting location is only available if you have the central spine installed in positions one or two. Like I've got it in position three, we're not going to have space behind our power supply to install the brackets. But the good news is we do have a drive cage down here where we can fit another two, two and a half inch drives. Similar to the power supply, it's held on with a single screw and then we're going to be able to slide the bracket out. And you can see on here, we can simply slide our two and a half inch drive into the bracket. And we'll secure it with the screws from the case accessory box. And then if we turn the bracket round, we are able to fit another drive on the other side. To open our CPU socket, we need to push the lever down and out, bring it all the way to the top of the motherboard, and then we're going to be able to open the socket up. We can lower our CPU down into the socket, making sure we've got the text the correct way up. And once we're happy our CPU is sitting correctly, we can go ahead and close the socket cover down again. Then we just need to close the lever, and as we do so, the black bit of plastic should pop off. And we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. To remove our M.2 SSD heatsink, we just need to push this little lever up, and then we're able to tilt the heatsink up and remove it. There's some plastic protection on the back of the heat pad and also on the back of the heatsink that we need to remove. Then we can take our M.2 SSD and insert it into the socket. And all we need to do is flatten it down and this little clip will hold it in place. And then we can replace the heatsink. Next we've got a RAM to install so we can go ahead and open the clips on the RAM slots. And then all we need to do is line the RAM up with the slots. Once we're happy everything's lined up correctly it's just some pressure to the top of the RAM and it's going to clip into place. We're now ready to install the backplate for our CPU cutter, and although we've got an LGA 1851 socket, the mounting holes are the same as LGA 1700, so it's the bracket labelled LGA 1700 that we want to use. Now this is a temporary build for me, so I'm not going to use the double-sided adhesive here, but you can peel this off and stick it to the, the back of your motherboard. So all we need to do then is line it up with the holes in the back of the motherboard, and then we've got one of the LGA 1700 standoffs to screw onto each corner. If there's any difficulty screwing these in, Montec to include this little screwdriver. It will go over the standoffs and allow you to tighten them up. So just before we set the motherboard into the case, our motherboard is going to be upside down. So some of these headers are going to be quite difficult to access at the bottom. So I'm just going to plug in the cable extensions for our AIO pump and chassis fan header. And I'm also going to plug in our 8-pin EPS power cable. So if you're using a different mini ITX motherboard, you're unlikely to have these cable extensions. The reason we've got them is we have got small connectors on the motherboard to save space. And then we've got a standard PWM connector at the end of these cables. Our CPU fan header is actually a standard four pin connector. We're now ready to install our motherboard, so I'm just going to move our riser cable through to the other compartment. And then we can slide our motherboard into place. And we'll secure the motherboard into place using the flat screws from the case accessory box. So again, another slightly unique thing about this motherboard is we do have this little button here, which if we press, it opens the clip on our top PCIe slot. And because we've got this, we've got this extra bit of plastic here, which means we're not able to use one of the standard case screws. Or it's included two different long screws with the motherboard. So you just have to find the one that has the right threads on it for this particular case. And it's the one with the bigger threads that we're going to use. The next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our front panel connectors are going to go into this header here. And starting off from right to left, the bottom two pins are for power LED positive and power LED negative. And then just above that, we've got our power switch. We then got our front panel type C header here. So we'll bring the cable through and get it plugged in. And then we've got our USB 3.0 cable, which is going to go into here. Now we do have quite a bit of excess cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it through to the other side. Our HD audio cable, I'm just going to pull straight through to the other side. 
I'm just going to free the HD audio cable up from this cable at the back and then we'll just bring it round the other side. I'm just going to route this cable down underneath our power supply cable extension in behind the fans and then we'll get it plugged into the motherboard. And the reason for rerouting it like this was just limited length on the cable. We need to remove the plastic protection from our riser cable. We can press the button to open the clip in the top slot and then we just need to line the riser cable up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up it's just some firm pressure and it is going to push into place and the clip will close. I'm also just going to free up the fan cables. I'm going to leave this fan cable pre-managed. I'm going to take it and plug it into the splitter cable coming from our other fan cable and then I'm going to pass the cable through to the front of the case. So plugging these cable adapters in earlier on was a good idea. So all we need to do is take the one on the left hand side that's going into our system fan header and we'll plug it into the PWM cable and then we'll just tuck all the excess cable through to the back. We can then replace the Velcro cable straps. The excessive fan cable I'm just going to wrap up on this other side with the excess front panel connectors and the excess front panel connectors we're just going to push in down the bottom. Next we can set the power supply bracket onto our power supply and we'll secure into place using four of the large power supply screws. In any of these builds where you're going to be using a power supply cable extension, make sure you turn your power supply on because you're not going to have access to this button after you've installed the power supply. So once we install our power supply, it's going to be harder to access our 24 pin cable. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the cable in first and then we'll install the power supply. So just before we install the power supply, I'm going to plug the extension cable into the bottom of the power supply and then we can line the power supply up with the reel and slot it into place. And then we'll secure it into place using the screw. We can then get our 24 pin cable plugged into the power supply and we'll get our EPS cable plugged in as well. And we'll plug in our 12 volt type power cable so it's ready for when we install our graphics card. You'll notice that I'm cable managing as I go. So what I'm going to do is just use a couple of cable ties to manage this power supply cable extension. I'm going to come back to manage these cables once we've installed our I.O. because I think there might be a few more cables to manage in here. Next we're going to install the graphics card so I'm going to need to remove the two expansion slot brackets and we can open the clip on our riser cable. Then we just need to line our graphics card up with the riser cable so I'm going to pass the graphics card through the cutout at the front, line it up and bring it back in. And then once we're happy everything's lined up with the slot it's just going to be some firm pressure and the graphics card is going to clip into place. We can then secure the graphics card into place using the two thumb screws. We can then plug the power supply cable into our graphics card and we've got some spare space at the front of the graphics card we can manage the cables with some cable ties. I'm just going to use a velcro cable strap to hold all the power supply cables in out of the way at the top. Next we can set our top radiator bracket onto our AIO and we'll secure it into place using the short radiator screws. Then we can set the top bracket back into place. Next we've just got our cables to get plugged in so I'm going to plug the PWM cable coming from the fans in the radiator into a PWM header at the bottom of the motherboard and I'm going to plug the RGB cable into an RGB header as well. Next we can remove the plastic protection from the back of the I.O. It's good to see thermal paste is pre-applied. And then we just need to line our pump up with the bracket beneath and we've just got a thumb screw to go onto each corner. Then at the bottom of the case we've just got the PWM cable to plug into the extension and we've got an ARGB cable which we need to plug into a header on the motherboard. If you don't have enough ARGB cables we do have an additional splitter cable here so you could plug both the ARGB cable from the pump and the one on the fans into one header. I've got two headers next to each other so I'm just going to plug this one into the motherboard. Then I'm just going to do a little bit of cable management. You might wonder why I've installed this side of the radiator facing out the front but unfortunately there is no front to this case. When you look in from the other side the graphics card is going to be on display so these cable extensions which run these fans are going to have to be on one side. But if we use some cable ties hopefully we'll be able to tidy things away.
Okay, so that's the build complete. I'm really impressed with how it turned out. If you don't know how to set the PC up, including installing Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, entering the BIOS, updating the BIOS, and just all the BIOS settings, I've made another video that covers all of that, and you'll find a link to that video in the description. In terms of the temperatures, our Core Ultra 9 285K idled at 37 degrees and reached a maximum of 85 degrees during a 10 minute IDA 64 stability test. The Tough Gaming RTX 4070 Ti idled at 26 degrees and reached a maximum of 71 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise, we had average noise levels of 38 decibels at idle and 55 decibels under load. So in terms of those temperatures for a small form factor build, I'm fairly happy with those. Noise levels were a little bit louder than I would personally be happy with, but we do have plenty of room to try and adjust the fan curves and bring the levels down a little bit. So as far as small form factor cases go, this isn't one of the smallest ones, but that made it quite straightforward to build in. Really just be really careful when you're picking your hardware. Remember that spine position is going to determine your CPU and your GPU clearance. Be careful with your radiator and fan thickness as well. Mine was just about okay with the power supply cables, but had I have gone for an SFXL power supply, it definitely wouldn't have fitted. And the other thing that I found really helped me was cable managing as I went. In terms of my thoughts on the case, I think it is a really attractive, well-built case. It does come at a premium price. It's around about £200, although you have three different colour designs for that. But I do think you are getting what you pay for. Um, small form factor cases aren't the cheapest, but this one is really well built. And I think it's really attractive with the wooden panel on the top. So in terms of things I didn't like about the case, the only things really for me to mention are it would have been nice to see the front panel connectors being a single cable rather than separate cables. And I would like to have seen some dust filters, particularly at the bottom and on the side. But apart from that, it's an absolutely solid case and I can most definitely recommend it if you're looking for an attractive small form factor case to go on your desk. If you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.